Hi everyone, welcome back. Section 58 of the Adi Parv. Astik Parv continued. Sati said, listen now to another very wonderful incident in connection with Astik. When King Janmejay was about to gratify Astik by granting the boon, the snake Takshak, thrown off Indra's hands, remained in midair without actually falling. King Janmejay thereupon became curious from Takshak. Afflicted with fear, did not at once fall into the fire, although libations were poured in proper form into the blazing sacrificial Agni in his name. Sonak said, Was it, O Sutta, that the mantras of those wise Brahmins were not potent, since Takshak did not fall into the fire? Sati replied, Unto the unconscious Takshak, the best of snakes, after he had been cast off Indra's hands, Astik has thrice said, Stay, 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 and he succeeding in staying in the skies, with afflicted heart, like a person somehow staying between Welkin and the earth. The king then, on being repeatedly urged by his sadasyas, said, let it be done as Astik had said. Let the sacrifice be ended. Let the snakes be safe. Let this Astik also be gratified. O Sutta, thy words also be true. Then the boon was granted to Astik. Plaudits, expressive of joy, rang through the air. Thus the sacrifice of the son of Parikshit, the king of the Pandava race, came to an end. The king Janmejay of the Bharata race was himself pleased, and on the Ritviks with the Sadasyas and all who had come there, the king bestowed money by hundreds and thousands. And unto Sutta, Lohitaksha, conversant with the rules of building and foundations, who had at the commencement said that a Brahmin would be the cause of the interruptions of the snake sacrifice, the king gave much wealth. The king of uncommon kindness also gave him various things, with food and wearing apparel according to his desire and became very much pleased. Then he concluded his sacrifice according to the prescribed rites and after treating him with very respect. The king in joy sent him home, the wise Astika exceedingly gratified, for he had attained his object. And the king said unto him, Thou must come again to become a sadasya in my great horse sacrifice. And Astik said, Yes, and then returned home in great joy having achieved his great end after gratifying the monarch. And returning in joy to his uncle and mother and touching their feet, he recounted to them everything as it had happened. Swati continued, Hearing all he had said, the snakes that had come thither became very much delighted, and their fears were allayed. They were much pleased with Astik and asked him to solicit a boon, saying, O learned one, what good shall we do unto thee? We have been very much gratified, having been all saved by thee. What shall we accomplish for thee, O child? Astik said, Let those Brahmins and other men who shall in the morning or in the evening cheerfully and with attention read the sacred account of this my act have no fear from any of you. And the snakes in joy thereupon said, O nephew, in the nature of thy boon, let it be exactly as thou sayest. That which thou askest, we all shall cheerfully do. O nephew, and those also that call to mind Astik, Artiman, and Sunitha in the day or in the night shall have no fear of snakes. He again shall have no fear of snakes who will say, I call to mind the famous Astika, born of Jaratkaru, that Astika who saved the snakes from the snake sacrifice. Therefore, ye snakes of good fortune, it behoveth you not to bite me. But go your way, blessed by ye, 
or go away, thou snake of virulent poison, and remember the words of Astika after the snake sacrifice of Janmeje. That snake who does not cease from biting after hearing such mentions of Astika shall have his hood divided in a hundredfold like the fruit of the Sinsa tree. Sauti continued. The first of Brahmins, thus addressed by the foremost of the chief of snakes assembled together, was very much gratified, and the high-souled one then set his heart upon going away. And that best of Brahmins, having saved the snakes from the snake's sacrifice, ascended to heavens when his time came, leaving sons and grandsons behind him. Thus I have recited to thee the story of Astika, exactly as it happened. Indeed, the recitation of this history dispelleth all fear of snakes. Sauti continued, O Brahman, O foremost one of Bhrigu race, as thy ancestor Pramati had cheerfully narrated unto his inquiring son Ruru, and as I had heard it, thus have I recited this blessed history from the beginning of the learned Astika, and O Brahman, O oppressor of all enemies, having heard this holy history of Astika, that increaseth virtue, and wit thou had it asked me about after hearing the story of the Dunduba, let thy ardent curiosity be satisfied. Section 49 Adi Vans Savatrana Parva Sonika said, O son, thou hast narrated to me this extensive and great history commencing from the progeny of Prigu. O son of Sita, I have been much gratified with thee. I ask thee again to recite to me, O son of Sita, the history composed by Vyasa, the varied and wonderful narrations that were recited amongst those illustrious sadasyas assembled at the sacrifice in the intervals of their duties, of that long extending ceremony, and the objects also of those narrations. I desire to hear from thee, O son of Sutta, recite therefore all those to me fully. Sauti said, the Brahmins, in the intervals of the duties, spoke of many things founded upon the Vedas, but Vyasa recited the wonderful and the great history called the Bharata. Sonat said, that sacred history called the Mahabharat, spreading the fame of the Pandavas, which Krishna Dwapayan, asked by Janmeja, caused to be duly recited after the completion of the sacrifice. I desire to hear duly. That history had been born of the ocean-like mind of the great Rishi of pure soul by yoga. Thou foremost of good men, recite it unto me. For, O son of Sutta, my thirst hath not been appeased by all thou hast said. Sauti said, I shall recite to thee from the beginning of that great and excellent history called the Mahabharat, composed by Vyasa. O Brahman, listen to it in full as I recite it. I myself feel a great pleasure in reciting it. Section 60 Adi Van Vanaswatra Parv continued. Sauti said, Hearing that Janmeja was installed in the snake sacrifice, the learned Rishi, Krishna the Vapayan, went thither on the equation. And he, the great grandfather of Pandavas, was born in an island of the Yamuna, of the virgin Kali by Shakti's son, Parashar, and the illustrious one developed by his will alone his body as soon as he was born, and master the Vedas with their branches and all the histories. And he readily obtained that which no one could obtain by asceticism, by the study of the Vedas, by vows, by fasts, by progeny, and by sacrifice. And the first of Veda knowing ones, he divided the Vedas into four parts. And the Brahmana and the Brahman Rishi had knowledge of the Supreme Brahma knew the past by intuition, was holy and cherished truth. Of sacred deeds and great fame, he begot Pandu and Dhritarashtra and Vidur in order to continue the line of Shantanu. 
and the high soul rishi with his disciples all conversant with the vedas and their branches entered the superficial sacrificial pavilion of the royal sage janmajay and he saw that the king janmajay was sitting in the sacrificial region like the god indra summoned by numerous sadasyas by by kings of various countries whose coronal locks had undergone the sacred bath and by competent ritviks like unto brahman himself and that foremost one of Brahm- bharata race the royal sage janmajay beholding the rishi come advanced quickly with his followers and relatives in great joy and the king with the approval of his sadasyas gave the rishi a golden seat as indra did to brihaspati and then the rishi capable of granting boons and adorned by celestial rishis him themselves had been seated the king of kings worshiped him according to the rites of the scriptures and the king then offered him his grandfather krishna who fully des- deserved them water to wash his feet and mouth and the argya and kind and accepting those offerings from the pandava janmeje and ordering the kind also not to be slain vyasa became much gratified and the king after those adorations bowed to his great grandfather and sitting in joy asked him about his welfare and they listed strictly also casting his eyes upon him and asking him about his welfare worshiped the sadasyas having been before worshiped by them all and after all this janmajay with all his sadasyas questioned the first brahmanas with joint palms as follows o brahman thou hast seen with thy own eyes the act of the kurus and the pandavas i am desirous of hearing thee recite their history what was the cause of the disunion amongst them that was fruitful of such extraordinary deeds why also did the great battle which caused the death of countless creatures occur between all my grandfathers their clear sense overclouded by fate o excellent brahman tell me all this in full as everything had happened hearing those words of janmajay krishna dwapain directed his disciple vaishampain seating by his side saying the discord that happened between the kurus and the pandavas of old narrate all to the king even as thou has heard from me then that blessed brahman at the command of his preceptor recited the whole of that history unto the king the sadasyas and all the chieftains there assembled and he told them all about the hostility and the utter extinction of the kurus and the pandavas section 61 adi van savatra na parv continued vaishan pan said bowing down in the first place to my preceptor with the eight parts of my body touching the ground with devotion and reverence and with all my heart worshiping the whole assembly of brahmans and the other learned persons i shall recite in full what i have heard from the high soul and great rishi vyasa the first of intelligent men in the three worlds and having got it within thy reach o monarch thou also art a fit person to hear the companion called composition called bharata encouraged by the command of my preceptor my heart feeleth no fear hear o monarch why the disunion occurred between the gurus and the pandavas and why also that exile into the woods immediately proceeding from the game and dice prompted by the desire of the gurus for rule i shall relate all to thee who ask it it thou best of the bharata race on the death of their father those heroes the pandavas came to their own home and within a short time they became well versed in archery and the kurus beholding the pandavas gifted with physical strength energy and power of mind popular also with the citizens and blessed with good fortune became very jealous then the crooked minded Duryodhan and Karan with the former's uncle the son of Suvala began to prosecute them and devise means for their exile then the wicked Duryodhan guided by the counsels of Shakuni his maternal uncle 
persecuted the Pandavas in various ways for the acquirement of undisputed sovereignty. The wicked son of Dhritarashtra gave poison to Bhima, but Bhima of the stomach of a, the wolf digested the poison with the food. Then the wretch again tied the sleeping Bhima on the margins of the Ganges and casting him into the water went away. But when Bhimsen of strong arms, the son of Kunti woke, he tore the strings with which he had been tied and came up, his pains all gone. And while asleep in the water, black snakes of virulent poison bit him in every part of his body. But that slayer of foes did not still perish. And in all those persecutions of the Pandavas by their cousins, the Kurus, the high-minded Vidura, attentively engaged himself, neutralizing those evil designs and rescuing the persecuted ones. And as Sakara from the heavens keeps in happiness the worlds of men, so did Vidur always keep the Pandavas from evil. When Duryodhan, with various means, both secret and open, found himself incapable of destroying the Pandavas who were protected by the fates and kept alive for grave future purposes, such as the extermination of the Kuru race, they then called together his counsellors consisting of Vrishna, that is Karna, the Shasan and others, and with knowledge of Dhritarashtra, caused a house of lack to be constructed. The king Dhritarashtra, from affliction of his children and prompted by the desire of sovereignty, sent the Pandavas tactfully into Varnavrata, and the Pandavas then went away with their mother from Hastinapur. And when they were leaving the city, Vidura gave them some idea of impending danger and how they could come out of it. The sons of Kunti reached the town of Varnavrata and lived there with their mother and agreeably to the command of Dhritarashtra, whose illustrious slayers of all enemies lived in the palace of Lark while in, in that town. And they lived in that palace for one year, protecting themselves from Purochan very wakefulness and causing a subterranean passage to be constructed, acted, acting according to the directions of Vidura. They set fire to the house of Lak and burnt Purochan, the enemies and the spy of Duryodhan, to death. Those slayers of all enemies, anxious with fear, they fled with their mother. In the woods beside the fountain, they saw a Rakshasa. But alarmed at the risk they ran of exposure by such an act, the Pandavas fled into the darkness, out of fear from the sons of Dhritarashtra. It was here that Bhima gained Hidimva, the sister of Rakshasa, he slew for a wife, and it was of her that Gatotkach was born. Then the Pandavas of rigid vows and conversant with the Vedas wended to the town of the name of Ekachakra and dwelt there in the guise of Brahmacharans. And those bulls amongst men dwelt in that town in the house of Brahmins for some time, with the temperance and its tins. And it was here that Bhima of mighty arms came upon a hungry and a mighty and a man-eating Rakshas of the name of Vaka. And Bhima, the son of Pandu, the tiger amongst men, slew him speedily with the strength of his arms and made the citizens safe and free from fear. Then they heard of Krishna, the prince of Panchal, having become disposed to select a husband from among the assembled princes. And hearing of it, they went to Panchal, and they obtained the maiden. And having obtained Draupadi as their common wife, they then dwelt there for a year. And after they became known, those chastiers of all enemies went back to Hastinapur. And they were then told by King Dhritarashtra and the son of Shantanu, Bhima, as follows. In order, O oh dear ones, Dissensions may not be take place between you and your cousins. We have settled that kind of prasa should be your abode. Abode, therefore, go ye, casting off all jealousies, the kind of prasa which contains many towns served by many board roads for dwelling there. 
and accordingly the Pandavas went with all their friends and followers to Khandavprastha, taking with them many jewels and precious stones. And the sons of Pritha dwelt there for many years, and they brought by force of arms many a prince under their subjugation, and thus setting their hearts on virtues and firmly adhering to truth, unruffled by affluence, calm in deportment and putting down numerous evils, the Pandavas gradually rose to power. And Bhima of great reputation subjugated the east, the heroic Arjuna, the north, Nakula, the west, and Sahadev, that slayer of all hostile heroes, the south. And this having been done, their domination was spread over the whole world. And with the five Pandavas, each like unto the sun, the earth looked as if she had six suns. Then, for some reason, Yudhishthira just, gifted with great energy and prowess, sent his brother Arjun, who was capable of drawing the bow with the left hand, dearer unto him than life itself, into the woods. And Arjuna, the tiger among men, a firm soul and gifted with every virtue, lived in the woods for eleven years and months. And during this period, on a certain occasion, Arjun went to Krishna in Dwarkavati, and Vibhatsu Arjun there obtained for a wife the lotus eyed and sweet speeched younger sister of Vasudev, Subhadra by name, and she became united in gladness with Arjun, a son of Pandu, like Shachi with the great Indra, or Sri with Krishna himself. And then, O best of monarchs, Arjun, the son of Kunti, with Vasudev gratified Agni, the carrier of the sacrificial butter in the forest of Khandava, by burning the medicinal plants in the woods to cure Agni of his indigestion. And to Arjuna, assisted as he was by Kechava, the task did not at all appear heavy, even as nothing is heavy to Vishnu, with immense design and resources in the matter of destroying his enemies. And Agni gave unto the son of Pritha the excellent bow Gandiva and a quiver that was inexhaustible and a war chariot bearing the figure of Garur on its standard. And it was on this occasion that Arjun relieved the great Asura Maya from fear of being consumed by in the fire. And Maya in gratitude built from for the Pandavas, a celestial place decked with every sort of jewels and precious stones. And the wicked Duryodhan, beholding that building, was tempted with the desire of possessing it. And deceiving y Yudhishthir by means of the dice played through the hands of the son of Suvala, Duryodhan sent the Pandavas into the woods for twelve years, and one additional year to be passed in concealment, thus making the period full thirteen. And the fourteenth year of monarch, then the Pandavas returned and claimed their property. They did not obtain it, and thereupon war was declared. And the Pandavas, after exterminating the whole race of Kshatriyas and slaying King Duryodhan, obtained back their devastated kingdom. This is the history of the Pandavas, who never acted under the influence of evil passions. And this the account of first of victorious monarchs of the disunion that ended in the loss of their kingdom by the Kurus and the victory of the Pandavas. With this, we come to an end of this section of Mahabharat. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is your host, Madhulika Rajrahan, signing off. Stay healthy always. Narayan Narayan.